Okay, we're back. This is theCUBE, SiliconAngle.tv's continuous coverage of Dell Storage Forum 12. We're in Boston, I'm Dave Vellante with my co-host Stu Miniman. And here, we're here with Travis Vigil, who is the executive director of Dell Equalogic. Travis, welcome. Thank you, how are you doing? Good, thank you. So Good. the Dell Storage Forum's second year looks bigger and, and, and better even. Yeah. And of course it's in Boston, so. That's, that's yeah. a good thing. It's, a, you know, it's our second combined Dell Storage Forum. Uh, and so when I say combined, that's a, a combination of Compellent C Drive and the Equalogic User Conference that started back in 2010. Uh, so for me, this is actually the fourth one. We had our very first Equalogic uh, User Conference in Dallas. Uh, it was a small affair, about 100 customers, and it's just amazing to see what it's grown to. Well, it's uh, fantastic that you, again, you chose Boston. You know, we, we love the, uh, the venue, and it looks like a, a good crowd. We were there this morning listening to the, the presentations to the, to the channel partners. Right. And um, that's always been, you know, your guys' home, home court, right? Right. So give us an update on, on what's going on in Equalogic. Well, things are good in Equalogic. Um, you know, uh, Equalogic has been part of the Dell family for uh, about four and a half years now. Uh, and in that time frame, we've, uh, we've uh, grown the number of Equalogic customers that we have from 4,000 to over 40,000 customers. Um, we've uh, continued to invest in Equalogic as a key part of uh, Dell storage. And, you know, Carter was just up here talking about the fluid data architecture. It's a key part of the fluid da data architecture as well. Um, we have really uh, continued to uh, keep Equalogic industry leading in terms of application integration. Uh, we have integration with VMware uh, that's second to none in the industry. Uh, we have integration with a lot of the key Microsoft applications, SQL, Exchange. Uh, we lad added integration to Linux. And you know, it's really continued a, st a story with our customers. You know, make, uh, give me a product with enterprise class features uh, but make it so that a mere IT generalist can manage it. You know, I want all the features, but I have a lean IT staff, I don't have a lot of time to manage it, and so I just want it to work. And that's why we focused on providing integration and ease of use with those applications that the majority of our customers are using with their ecological environments. So, so, so Travis, so you talked about the VMware integration. I wonder if we can dig in a little deep on that. So, sure. I started working with VMware over 10 years ago, yeah. and Dell from the server side was one of I I VMware's biggest partners. Um, from the storage side, as we've seen the acquisitions of Equalogic and Compellent come in, mm -hmm. we've seen deeper integration, and you know, you're, you're claiming second to none integration. Can you talk a little bit about that partnership and how closely you're working with VMware? Absolutely. Um, the, uh, the focus on integration uh, for the Equalogic product line had started even pre-acquisition, and, and since the acquisition, we've really you know, doubled down on those efforts. And um, uh, it, it started with uh, you know, vCenter integration in terms of management um, capabilities, uh, we've done application consistency uh, with VMware. Um, uh, we have uh, support for site recovery, uh, their site recovery manager uh, solution. Um, we have done some ease of use to tools for VDI deployments. So we have uh, a tool we call the Virtual Desktop Deployment Utility that uh, 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 helps speed deployment uh, for VDI deployments using uh, VMware. Um, and uh, we have been there with all of their major storage initi initiatives. VAI, we were one of the first partners to have support for VAI. VASA, we have support for VASA. And you know, there's some exciting new things that are coming in the future that we're just starting to talk about. Uh, one of the new initiatives is VVOLS. Um, uh, that's uh, sort of the next generation of VAI, and we're working closely with them on, uh, on developing that as well. Yeah, so the, the whole VMware storage ecosystem has really evolved, hasn't yeah, it? Yeah, absolutely. You know, three, four years ago, it was kind of a mess. I mean, it was really a difficult thing for customers to really deal with storage. I mean, it just it was sort of like pushing the problem out. Mm -hmm. How has that changed, and you know, what's the future hold? You mentioned VVault. Uh, you know, what can we expect now going forward? Well, I... Uh, wow. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> no problem. <laughs> we were expecting a big answer. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, I think that a big part of our success with Equalogic has been that focus on um, virtualized environments and VMware in particular. Um, we have uh, probably about 75, 80% of our customers that are running Equalogic in some sort of virtualized environment. And um, you know, they're really looking for storage that is easy to manage and just works with their virtualized environment. A and you're right, you know, when, w when you started seeing this huge inflection point of people on the server side moving to a virtualized environment, 
They wanted to go to short shared storage so they could get some of the benefits that shared storage provided in virtualized environments like the ability to do vMotion and some of the more advanced capabilities in virtualized environments. They were looking for storage that was easy to use. And it was interesting because um, you know, they, this was a, the first time a lot of these applications, the, the applications that were initially being virtualized were put on a, a SAM. And so it was really kind of a jump ball. It, it wasn't clear that you had to go on you know, your traditional data set or SAN to, uh, to deploy uh, shared storage for a virtualized environment. So we, what we saw was a lot of projects being deployed utilizing Equalogic as the back end for a virtualized environment. And really it's, it's a big part of the success that we've had because of that intense focus on making sure that we're integrated and optimized in a very easy to use solution in a virtualized environment, VMware and Hyper-V. You mentioned, Travis, uh, VDI before. Yes. Um, so what's going on with VDI? I mean, you know, it, it for a couple of years ago and even, even in recent history, it was it's kind of a, a niche offering, right? Mm -hmm. It was very specialized on whether it was call centers or maybe certain financial applications, maybe you know, government where you had to have highly secure. I, is that changing with the advent of, of mobile and what are you seeing from customers? Yeah, uh, VDI is, is, a, is a very interesting application. Um, you know, I personally think we're sort of a, a, on the, you know, at the precipice of, the, uh, a, of a, a big adoption of VDI in the industry. And, um, you know, l sort of like virtualization in the beginning, one of the issues that people have had with virtualized desktop deployments has been the storage. So we hear from our customers and our, and our channel partners is, hey, um, I, I want to do VDI, and the way I do it is I get a server, it has some DAS in it, I do a proof of concept for 50 desktops, 100 desktops. It works fabulously. But then I try to scale it out, and, you know, and, and I run into performance issues, I run into scaling issues, so on and so forth. And that issue, um, to me, is a perfect issue that can be solved by or an issue that can be uh, addressed by scale-out architectures. Now, Carter was up here talking about scale-out architectures being one of the key tenets of the fluid data architecture. Um, what a scale-out architecture like Equalogic allows you to do is scale performance and capacity linearly. And so, um, you can do that proof of concept with a small Equalogic device, and as you scale it out, you're able to scale performance and capacity linearly, and you don't run into that you know, what I call it the, the VDI hangover issue where it, you know, it worked great when it was small, but when I scaled it, I have all these manageability and performance issues. And uh, it's been a big fo focus for us on the Equalogic side um, for some time. I talked about the virtual desktop deployment utility that we have as part of our host integration tools for VMware. Um, also, uh, we've uh, launched and refreshed uh, what we refer to as a hybrid array. And uh, the hybrid array is an Equalogic array that has uh, both SSD and spinning media in the same array. But most importantly, it has the intelligence in the array to make sure that the hot bits of data end up on the SSD, the cooler bits of, of data end up on the spinning media. So you can think of it as you know, kind of tiering with an array. You know, obviously, Compellent, second to none in tiering in, in the industry. This is, this is a very targeted offering for like a VDI deployment. And what we've seen is uh, customers are able to get very big performance boosts because of using SSD in combination with, with, spin, uh, with spinning media. Um, they're able to address a lot of the issues they've had around boot storms, a lot of the issues that they've had around scaling um, uh, VDI deployments, you know, starting small and growing. And so, you know, with the hybrid array, with the ease of use, with the scale-out architecture that we have on Equalogic, um, you know, we believe that we have an excellent solution that, that addresses many of the storage problems people have had with VDI traditionally. Yeah, yeah Travis, uh, you know, I, I've actually been quite impressed with uh, Equalogic's VDI story. Uh, back in 2010, you guys brought us uh, Brown Shoe uh, as a customer that had, you know, thousands of desktops yeah. that, that were transformed at VMworld. And they were using the hybrid array. They use, using the hybrid array. Yeah. So, you know, when, when I've looked at VDI, there are kind of three things that, that kind of hold people back. One is uh, they don't do a proper assessment going in and uh, right. they, they run into that overruns and costs and they're not sizing. prepared. Sizing their, their users, uh, you know, don't have uh, the, the performance that they expect. Uh, secondly, going from that, that pilot, as you said, to the production mm -hmm. um, is, is usually different. A lot of people say, this is my test environment. When I go to production, it's different. And then I run into that, that, that gap, but your scale-out architecture fits. And the third one I'm wondering if you can address uh, quickly for us is, you know, who manages
manages this. So like like we talked about from kind of traditional storage to virtualized storage, mm -hmm. there's some of the blurring of the lines. Yes. The desktop deployments are usually uh, you know owned by you know there's a desktop group or mm -hmm. there's a storage group and who owns it? H how do you guys see that fitting into the environment? Yeah. Uh, so you know I think I think with virtualization what what you saw uh, was that the virtualization team uh, ended ended up owning both the servers and the storage for virtualization deployments. I think, uh, you know, it's a bit, still a bit of a known on, on VDI, but I mean, you know, my guess is, and what we're seeing more and more of, is again, the virtual virtualization team is, is owning um, the entire enterprise portion of, uh, of, the, um, of the deployment. You know, we talked about VDI, we didn't talk much ab about the endpoint, we talked a lot about the, you know, the backend infrastructure, because that's where people have been having the issues in terms of sizing, assessment, and scaling. And so, you know, specifically to, to your question, I, you know, I, I believe it's going to be the virtualization team that ends up uh, owning that. And, you know, I think, you know, that's a good thing for Dell Storage given our tight integration with, uh, with virtualization. The server virtualization team. That's right. Yeah. That's okay. right. E despite the changes at the endpoint with mobility. Yes, yes. I, uh, specifically to the back end. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, because the, the, you know, I, I think the, uh, the ownership between the back end and the, and the front end is, is, is yet to be determined, but certainly on the back end, um, uh, the uh, planning, the assessment, the uh, delivery of that has got to be owned by the server virtualization team. And, and what in your, what's your sense of how the endpoint is changing the requirements? Because when you think of desktop virtualization, you think of a very, you know, update intensive environment, mm -hmm. much different than a server right. virtualization environment. Right. How is mobile changing that? Uh, you know, I, th I think it, it all goes back to the sizing and the, and the performance assessment up front. Um, you know, what we're seeing, you know, VDI sizing and benchmarking is still pretty nascent. Mm -hmm. What we're seeing is that there's a couple of uh, two or three different performance sizing um, profiles that are coming out. You know, kind of the task worker, the call center type worker. And moving forward, I think you're going to have to have a third one for the mobile worker as well. And so, you know, it's going to be, you know, w one of those both and things where you're going to have to look at your entire endpoint users and have, you know, amalgamate, uh, you know, what type of users they have in there for an aggregate workload back into the, uh, to the server and storage back end. Okay. Great. So, Travis, I'm wondering if we can switch back to kind of the general Dell storage discussion. You sure. Know? So, we know through the acquisitions of Equalogic and Compellent, Dell's put a lot of effort in still building out those engineering and developing. We heard in the keynote today, they said, you know, we don't want you to think so much of products, we want you to think as Dell storage. So, can you give us a little bit of the inside baseball as to what you've seen the last couple of years? Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, Carter came up, uh, was here, and he was talking about, you know, how going forward, Dell storage is going to have an identity. And it's going to be less of an identity of Equalogic or Compellent or any or, or any of the uh, the uh, companies that we've acquired. And you know, it's it's very important that there are some key capabilities that we have in these products, like tiering on Compellent or scale out on Equalogic or ease of use on Equalogic, that will become part of the Dell storage portfolio identity. And so you're starting to see that blurring. You know, even with uh, what we're doing with with our file system offerings. Um, we uh, have uh, fluid file system support for Equalogic. Uh, we have fluid file system for support for PowerVault. And uh, maybe if you stick around here, you might hear some more updates about fluid file su system support on some other stuff. Um, and so you're going to see that as a, uh, as a link across the portfolio, common and consistent file system, um, common and consistent deduplication, which Carter also talked about, as the foundation that starts to tie at least all of the primary storage uh, offerings together uh, and provides the foundation on which you can build you know, cross-platform tiering. So that t same tiering concept that you have on a compellent device, you can extend that across the, uh, across the portfolio, even uh, uh, going all the way to our archival products like uh, the DX product, for example. So you're starting to see that develop, and that is absolutely where we're making the investments in R&D going forward to, to, to provide a Dell storage portfolio. I, li I mean, I personally like the e emphasis on integration. A lot of people give lip service to integration. My sense is Dell is really serious about it. Um, I want my last question, um, I wish I had more time because I got some tweets here too, but to talk about the flash. So I, I can envision you know, at least five layers of flash. You got the server flash, yes, the all yes. flash array, the hybrid, you can now just a you know, pure bit bucket spinning and yeah. then you get an archive. You know, maybe this, this, some of those blend, but it seems to me that's a software challenge now. Yes. Um, and you mentioned Compellent and sort of the gold standard, if yes, you will. Yes, absolutely. You know, data movement, they've invented the whole concept. I guess IBM Mainframe has invented it, but Dell, you know, I mean, I mean, uh, Compellent brought it to the, to the masses. Um, in the context of that integration, that feels like a whole new challenge. 
yes. for you guys. Um, right. Talk about that a little bit. Well, you're right. You're, you're going to see Flash at all, port, at all places I in the ecosystem, in the server, in the storage, you know, a and it's going to serve different purposes of acceleration depending on where you put it, right? Um, you know, we see a real big opportunity uh, given that Dell is an end-to-end -end provider of server, sh server storage and networking to have Flash in the server as sort of a tier zero uh, capability. Um, and, you know, we've done a lot of work on you know making the flash in the server more usable on the server side, but sort of the sort of the holy grail is you know how do you make it such that the flash in the server is a logical extension of say a compellent SAN, right? And it has the same manageability and the same benefits of uh, traditional external um, external storage. Um, and so you know I would expect that you will be hearing more about that potentially here at this conference. Um, and it's a very big focus for us going forward. I, you know, I said last question, but I... Yeah, I, Travis, I, I actually, if I can get a question in here too. We've been having some discussions uh, on Twitter uh, about the SMB market, and uh, was, was wondering if you can help us kind of tease apart how Equalogic and like PowerVault, how Dell looks at the SMB market and where you kind of see that fitting. And if I, if I may, so there's, a, there's a, um, a tweet that I got that I want you to respond to. It's from uh, uh, D. McVitie. Yeah. Said, um, I'm an Equalogic fanboy, but last time I checked, it's a little expensive for most SMBs. I wonder if you could respond to that as well. Yeah, so uh, you know the interesting thing is is we use sort of SMB as a generic, uh, you know, a g generic customer segment, and and what you see yeah. is within SMBs you have people that are extremely small and are just looking for you know uh, an easy way to add some external storage, and you see customers that you know th that have uh, storage needs that a lot of large enterprises have. Yeah, M is really different than S, a isn't it? A lot of times. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. M is different than S, and so you know, um, Equalogic has never been the um, the acquisition price leader. What we've been is the TCO leader, right? Um, so uh, we have all-inclusive software capabilities. So all of the integration, all of the advanced features, you know, all of that comes if you're a, uh, an Equalogic customer on a valid support contract. Um, and then the scaling capability, the, the ease of use and scaling, and the long-term investment protection you get from a scale-out architecture are really our values. So you know, the, the, the target customer for, for Equalogic is, you know, I st I'm, I'm uh, potentially have uh, small uh, external storage needs today, but I'm fast growing, and that manageability is the thing I need first and foremost, right? I probably don't have a storage department. I probably have an IT guy, and it just needs to be easy to use, right? And so uh, I, I'm willing uh, to, to pay for those features and, and benefits um, because of the fact that I will save money in the long run in terms of manageability. Now, PowerVault, on the other hand, is there's there's a lot of customers that just need uh, cost-effective external storage, and you know those customers live in SMB, uh, they live in our public segment, they live in LE, and so um, we actually sell the PowerVault product across, you know, all of those those business units. So there's really very different usage for each of those products. Yeah. So if you're a super small company and storage is not strategic, you're maybe not growing, mm -hmm. Equalogic might not be for you. That's um, right. But if you've got some, some constraints on your business as a result of storage growth, then Equalogic is, is probably a better fit. That's right, that's exactly right. Uh, good. All right, Travis, well listen, thanks very much for taking time out of your busy schedule here at Dell Storage Forum for coming on theCUBE. It was uh, great to have you. And, um, Welcome back anytime. All right, thank you very much. All right, keep it right there. This is theCUBE, SiliconANGLE.TV's continuous coverage of Dell Storage Forum. We'll be right back.